All right, question for you, who was Israel's greatest king? Uh, if I had to guess, you're gonna say King David, that's a good guess, and maybe that's the correct answer, but I've got another answer for you, and that is King Hezekiah. Okay, Old Testament king, let's look at three biblical statements about King Hezekiah. And it says, there was no king like him among all the kings of Judah, before him or after him. He remained faithful to the Lord in everything. He carefully obeyed all of God's law. Now, those last two statements, they're not gonna show up on my tombstone, maybe you, but not me. That is an amazing uh, spiritual resume. It's an amazing life summary, like few people uh, in scriptural history. This is quite the man. So you might think that given that resume, given that life history, that heart orientation, that that meant uh, that he had a really blessed life and an easy life, just lots of protection and blessing. But the truth is, now King Hezekiah was ruling during the time of the rise of the kingdom of Assyria. So the kingdom of Assyria had been around for centuries and by King Hezekiah's time was ruled by Sennacherib. This is the mightiest empire in the world. It's a vast empire and they have an unstoppable army and King Sennacherib and this army have decimated kingdom after kingdom and they come and they destroy the northern kingdom of Israel. So the northern king of Israel is destroyed and all that's left to Israel is King Hezekiah down in Jerusalem. King Sennacherib comes and encircles Jerusalem. And so what is King Hezekiah's response? Well, first of all, he publicly repents. There's a little more to the story, but basically he publicly repents. He says to all of Israel, we all must repent before the Lord. We have not followed his ways. And this, this had just been made known to him. Then he calls out to the Lord. So more importantly, it's what didn't he do? So most kings would hire mercenaries. They'd form an alliance with another country. He doesn't do those things. He says basically, Lord, all there is is you. We have to rely on you. You're the answer. You are our only source of rescue. Okay, so that's that statement. Right after that, King Sennacherib has encircled Jerusalem and he's shouting over the wall to the people of Jerusalem. He says, listen, people of Jerusalem, don't listen to your king. He says, there's no hope. Your God is no hope and your army is no hope and I am unstoppable. There's never been a force like us. There's never been a kingdom with us. So give up or I'm gonna decimate you. Okay, that's the setting. Now, what's the rest of the story? It's so cool. So right after that, uh, 185,000 soldiers of the king, of King Sennacherib are found dead in camp. Boom, overnight, Lord decimates them, kills them. And there's not a lot of detail but that's what they wake up to. So Sennacherib is forced to go home. He has to withdraw, there is no army. And he goes back to the kingdom of Assyria and sits on his throne. And then guess what? He is killed and he's killed by his own children and he's killed in the temple of Dagon, his false God. And that's not a mistake. That the location of his death was no mistake, I guarantee it. You in your life are gonna face the siege of Jerusalem and I can just almost guarantee it. And then you're gonna face several of these sieges. And the siege of Jerusalem means there is no hope for you. There is no hope in the human. And you're gonna feel like all is lost. And I want you to think about something. And this is, this is radical. But this siege of Jerusalem is the greatest spiritual gift you're probably gonna be given. Because the, the siege, the crisis, is the door to spiritual transformation. It's the door to spiritual growth where you never get it in peacetime. When life is easy, you are not forced to grow. But during the siege is when we come finally to the end of ourselves and we rely on God like we never have before. Think about that. God bless you.